Good morning. I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sermon Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. So glad to have you with us here this morning for our congregation at prayer, this being Thursday, June 9th, 2020. Um, If you haven't been with us this week, you know that, or maybe you don't know, that I've been pre-recording these because I'm out of town uh, to visit family. So um, if you do have questions or comments, um, or you'd like to interact with the text, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll respond as I have opportunity, maybe not this week, but next week. And uh, yeah, that's fine too. Of course, if you have the congregation at prayer, either from Sunday morning, or you've printed it off from the website, or you follow along there, uh, you can use that both to introduce this, um, the readings and meditation upon those readings, catechesis, and then finish out with prayer. Um, use as little or as much of the order or guide for daily meditation and prayer as you like. All right. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 31. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong, but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. Yet he who is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words, but will rise against the house of evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They they all will perish together. For thus the Lord has spoken to me, as a lion roars and young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for its hill. Like birds flying about, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will also deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. Return to him against whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall throw away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, sin which your own hands have made for yourselves. Then Assyria shall fall by a sword, not of man, and a sword not of mankind shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. He shall cross over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the banner, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Our reading today for Catechesis continuation of the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, or excuse me, chapter 12, beginning in verse 22. Then one was brought to him who was also, who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw, and all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now, When the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. 
Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. All right. So, who did they bring um, to Jesus? Yeah, this is a man who is demon-possessed, blind, and mute. And what did Jesus, of course, do for him? (laughs) He healed him so that he both spoke and saw. You see that in verse 22? All right. And of course, in response, now the crowd wonders, could this be the son of David? Hmm. Now, why did they think? Why did they wonder if this was the son of David? This language, son of David, had come out um, with the two blind men back in Matthew 9, right? Son of David, have mercy on us. Uh, We'll see it again later in Matthew 21 uh, at the triumphal entry when the crowds cry out, Hosanna to the son of David. But what's the background to the son of David? Why? Casting out the demon, giving this man both speech and sight. Why would they think he's the son of David? Well, for this, we need prophecy. All right, so um, we'll show a few of them. Isaiah 42, verse 7. To open blind eyes, to bring prisoners out, uh, out prisoners from the prison, to, the, to those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. Yeah. All right, so this is the promise of the eternal kingdom. Um, think also maybe later on, I'll just scroll forward a little bit. I think the Lord's work here. I will bring the blind, verse 16, by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed who trust in carved images who say to molded images, you are gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as he who is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but you do not observe. Opening ears, but he does not hear. Hmm, we'll see that later. All right, so Isaiah's prophecy. Of course, um, we also have uh, the promise also given um, to David by Nathan the prophet. Um, where should we jump in here? How about in verse 10? Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. And the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed, your offspring, after you, who will come from your your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O Lord God, and you have spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner of man, O Lord God? Now what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, know your servant. Yeah, Um, we've mentioned this before about the divine name, but it's worth emphasizing here again. Um, sometimes Lord is all small caps, but you notice here God is all small gaps. Um, so the translators here chose to translate Elohim as Lord, Adonai is another word for Lord, and then um, the divine name, which we sometimes substitute Yahweh or something like that, um, or Adonai, translate that as God here, all in small caps. But this is 
God's own name, the game that he gave. He told Moses, who should I say sent me? Sent me? Moses asked. God said, I am sent you, right? This name right here. All right. So that's the promise of the son of David. They expect this king who will set up a kingdom forever and show mercy that will never end. Let's get back to our reading. Could this be the son of David? What do the Pharisees say he is, though? Not the son of David. Yeah, Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons, right? A uh, Philistine deity, that name Beelzebul, Lord of the Flies, if you've read the book. Um, but Jesus, <laughs> always, uh, always practical, actually, makes uh, an observation about their accusation. It actually m- makes no logical sense, right? If a kingdom or city or house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. You see that in verse 25? Satan want to cast himself out? What's the answer? No, of course not. Right? So in verse 27, um, how does Jesus question the authority of the Pharisees? Yeah, he asks this question. By what authority, by whose authority do your sons cast out demons? Hmm. Now, what authority does Jesus claim to have? See that in verse 28. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, the pneuma uh, kai theos, right? The, the Spirit of God. And who is the strong man who is bound? Satan, and who binds him? Jesus, right? What does it mean to plunder Satan's house then? The strong man's house. Yeah, it's to bring out all those who were in captivity in Satan's kingdom. Is there any middle ground between a Jesus and the world? Or Jesus and the devil, if you like? The devil's, uh, the world being the devil's kingdom? No, well, either, either one is with Christ or he's against him. Right? Which you see right there in verse 30. Uh, now, what is this blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Of course, people are fearful of this, of blaspheming the Holy Spirit because it's the unpardonable sin here, right? Unforgivable sin. Well, it, it goes back to actually the testimony of the Spirit, which has been the question here in this whole reading right above, right? Is he the son of David? Does he cast out demons by the Spirit of God? To deny the Holy Spirit is to deny both what their eyes saw and what he spoke. You see? To deny the Spirit's testimony that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. How does one then speak against the Holy Spirit? Which we see here, it will be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit. That's to speak against the gifts the Spirit gives. That is the message of the gospel that one is saved by faith in Christ alone. All right. Now, meditation on this text. Only the Son of David could bring a kingdom where sight was restored and speech given. As Solomon's kingdom had been one of peace, so now the Son of David brings the kingdom of peace that passes all human understanding, as he pours out his Holy Spirit upon the church. Christ has come to bind the strong man, the devil, and bring the captives out of his house. It is to these captives that Jesus gives the spirit of freedom. That spirit will testify to Christ alone in order to call people to faith. To speak against the Holy Spirit is to live in unbelief, and so cannot be forgiven, for unbelief always rejects forgiveness which has been won by Christ. All right, so there ends our catechesis and meditation on this text for today. Again, I encourage you to go and to pray um, for the church and for all people as they have need for our country. And you can use, of course, the prayer guide for that. And the back of the bulletin has a list of all those who are in need, but also um, those whom, with whom we rejoice this week with their birthdays or baptisms. So go and pray uh, according to the guide as you're able and use our bulletin. All right, Lord be with you all. We'll see you again tomorrow.